In the last lecture, we connected our NestJS application to the PostgreSQL database by specifying some connection options in the app module. So if I go to app module of our NestJS application, in the app module, we are importing this type ORM module and on that, we are calling this for root method. And to this for root method, we are passing an object and in that object, we are specifying the connection options. Basically, what type of database we are using, then what is the host name, port name, username to connect to the database, password to the connect to the database, and as well as the database with which we want to work in the PostgreSQL server. But this connection here, this is a synchronous connection. A synchronous connection establishes a direct immediate link between your application and the database. And when your code is requesting some data from the database, the execution halts until the database responds. So for example, if you are, let's say, requesting the user details from the database, and if this query is going to take some time to fetch the data from the database, for that time period, no other code will be executed in your NestJS application. So it is basically going to block the execution of other codes until we have received the data from the database. So here, in case of synchronous connection, we will have a blocking nature where when we are trying to fetch a data from the database or insert a data into the database, unless we have received the response from the database, the application will become unresponsive. The rest of the execution will be blocked. And this blocking behavior can impact the application performance, especially with time consuming queries. If the queries is taking less time, then it is fine. But if the query is taking more than 10 seconds or 20 seconds, for that 20 seconds, the complete application will become unresponsive. The execution of the code will be halted. And this is not the behavior we want in our application. This behavior is okay when we are doing the development of the application or when we are developing a very small application. But for a large real world application, this type of behavior is not acceptable. And that's why when we are building a large real world application, we should go with asynchronous connection. In the asynchronous connection, it utilizes promises and async await. So in case of asynchronous connection, whenever we are trying to fetch data or insert data into the database, that execution will happen asynchronously and it will not block the execution of rest of the code in the application. So your code can continue executing other tasks while the database query is running in the background. And this improves the application responsiveness and it prevents blocking. So I hope now you understand what is synchronous connection and asynchronous connection and what is the advantage of using asynchronous connection over synchronous connection. So now in our application, we are going to change this synchronous connection to asynchronous connection. And for that, on the type ORM module, instead of calling for root method, now we are going to call for root async. To this for root async also, we need to pass an object. But in that object, we are not going to specify the database connection options directly. So let me cut it from here. And here in this object, which we are passing to this for root async, we are going to use use factory. And to this, we need to assign a function. Here I'm using arrow function syntax. And in the arrow function, we are going to pass an object. And in that object, we are going to specify the database option settings, which we had copied. So I have just pasted it here. So as you can see, here we need to use use factory, to which we are assigning a function. To that function, we are passing this object. And in that object, we are specifying the database options. And in this way, now, this application is not connected to database synchronously. It is connected to database asynchronously. So now, whenever we will run a query from our NestJS application, it will be executed asynchronously in the background. And it is not going to block the execution of the rest of the code of our application. And let's also go to terminal just to verify if everything is working and there is no error. So as you can see, there is no error. But this time, we are connected to our database asynchronously. Apart from this, when we use for root async method, it also allows us to inject dependencies if we want. 
So in future, let's say if I want to inject some dependency to use for this type ORM module, I can go ahead and I can inject that dependency. And to do that, we can use the import array using which we can import a module which we want to use. And then we can use this inject array to inject the dependency from that module which we want to use. So this is also possible. Now currently I am simply setting it as empty array because currently we don't want to import anything and inject anything here. But in future lectures if required, if we need to inject something to this type or a module, there we will use this import array and this inject array. So this is all from this lecture. This is how we can connect to a database asynchronously from our NestJS application. And for that, we need to use for root async. If we simply use for root, that will connect to the database synchronously. But if we want to connect to the database asynchronously, we need to use for root async. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.